Okay, let's discuss the reproductive histology. We're gonna start with the male and then we'll end with the female. So here you're seeing a picture of the, um, the male reproduction, our reproductive system. So here, I'm gonna grab my pen. So here's the penis. Okay, and then on the sides of the penis or underneath the penis, you will see the testes. The testes are what slang called the balls. Sorry, not trying to be vulgar. But those balls of testes sit inside a skin sac called the scrotum. So that skin sac is going to house those testes in them. And let me erase this so you can see it a little bit better now. You'll see that on top of the testes, you have these little hats. These little hats or common looking structures are called your epididymis. Okay, that's right there. And then from the epididymis, the sperm will leave the epididymis and it will go up through this long tube called the vas deferens. It will go through the prostate and out the urethra until it exits the body, okay? And I show you this so that when we go over the histology, you will know what portion of the male reproductive system that we're talking about, okay? So now let's go into the epididymis versus the testes. Remember the testes are the two balls, okay? and the epididymis are the two comma hats that sit on top of the testes. <clears throat> Excuse me, so here you're seeing the testes. In the testes, you'll see very um, circular structures. Um, they look like little bouncy balls, you know, that you would get out of the gumball machines. That's what they remind me of, okay? And in the epididymis, you're gonna see some of these round ball structures, but you're also gonna see a lot of very long drawn out structures. So they're more oval and stretched apart. They're not all as circular as you're gonna see in the testes. And then it's showing the vast deference here, the entrance to that long tubule that the sperm will travel through to get to the external surface of the body. Okay, the next picture again, we're just contrasting the testes from the epididymis. In the testes, you're gonna see these round, circular, bouncy ball looking structures. And we'll name those structures on our testes slide. But right now, I just want to show you both of these side by side. And the epididymis, you're seeing that the structures in the epididymis are gonna be more elongated. And here is another comparison picture from the epididymis and the testes. So now we're gonna be looking just at the epididymis. So remember we said in the epididymis, you're gonna have some of these circular structures, but you're gonna have a lot of these long drawn out structures. So you can see this one here is very elongated. And this one here is very elongated. This one is even elongated and this one but you do still have some of the circular structures. So in the epididymis, you're looking for both, the elongated with the circles as well. So that's one way you can identify your epididymis. This is another picture of the epididymis. Again, you're seeing the circular structures and the elongated structures. And then this is another picture. You're seeing some circular structures, but you're also seeing these elongated structures, almost like S's and C's and curves, comma shapes. Now let's go to the testes. There are some structures that you're gonna have to identify in the testes. You're gonna have to identify the seminiferous tubule, interstitial cells, spermatogonium, spermocytes, and spermatids. So let's jump in. Okay, so this 
is a picture of the testes. Remember I said the testes look like they have a bunch of bouncy balls in them. Um, and each of these circles is a seminiferous tubule. Remember when we talked about um, the uh, cubital cells in AP1, I said picture them like you're looking through the end of a cut water hose. So if you've ever had a water hose with a split or a leak in it, you'll cut it off so that you can still use part of the water hose. And you can look through the end of it and you can see the outside circle of the rubber of the water hose. So that's kind of what you're looking at here. You're looking at these tubules that have been cut and now you're looking into the little tubules, okay? So these bouncy ball or circular structures here are gonna be your seminiferous tubules. The interstitial cells are going to be all of the cells outside of the seminiferous tubules. So here's a bunch of interstitial cells. All of these cells here are interstitial cells. Here are interstitial cells. Here are interstitial cells. So again, your interstitial cells are gonna be all of the cells outside those seminiferous tubules. Okay, here's another picture of our uh, image of the testes, and you're seeing these seminiferous tubules here. And then here you're seeing the interstitial cells. So if I say identify this structure, this structure is a seminiferous tubule. If I say identify these cells, you're gonna say interstitial cells. If I say identify this tissue, you're gonna tell me it's testes. Again, if I say um, identify this tissue or this organ or gland, you're gonna say testes. If I say identify these cells, they're interstitial cells. If I say identify this structure, you're gonna tell me seminiferous tubule. Okay, now when you are looking at those seminiferous tubules, let me get my pen. Okay, so the outside circle is going to be like, oh, bad circle. Oh, let me see if I can make that a little bit clearer. Hang on. Come back, pen. Okay, so the outside circle goes kind of like this, okay? So what you're looking at here is towards the outside of the circle, these are your spermatogonia. These are um, gonna be your very, very immature uh, sperm cells. So these are almost like your sperm, your stem cells of the sperm, okay? Very, very immature. And then as they mature, they become spermatocytes and y'all do not have to identify whether they're first degree or second degree, but um, they're the next in line. Then when you work almost to the inside where you're in the lumen part of the seminiferous tubule, you get to the spermatids, and the spermatids will then become the spermatozoa or the sperm cells. So spermatozoa are the same thing as sperm cells and they have the elongated tips with the tails on them. So you do have to identify your spermatogonia, your spermocytes, um, spermatids, and then sperm. Okay, so. Let's go to the next slide. Let me erase my pin mark here. Okay, so we are looking on the inside of a seminiferous tubule and you can see this outside lining of that seminiferous tubule. So the cells um, right here that are very nondescript, that are right on the edge of the outside of that seminiferous tubule, those are spermatogonia. And then you have your 
spermatocytes that are in the middle. And they usually have very granular looking nuclei, if you will. Okay. So these are your spermatocytes. Then the ones where you have a very condensed um, nucleus, these are going to be your spermatids. So this is a spermatid, this is a spermatid, this is a spermatid. Okay, so again, your, we're getting too bunched up in here. Um, your spermatids are going to be very condensed nuclei. And then your spermatozoa or your sperm cells are going to have these bullet shaped. Um, nuclei or heads to them. So they're going to have a very elongated head. And sometimes when you're looking at the testes, you may or may not be able to see the little tails of the uh, spermatozoa. Okay. So again, make sure you can label all of these. The spermatogonia, um, a very pale nucleus, nondescript cell, and they're usually on the very outside lining of your seminiferous tubules. Then your spermatocytes usually look like a very granular nucle uh, nucleus. Your spermatid is gonna be a very condensed looking nucleus. And then your spermatozoa are gonna have the bullet shaped elongated nuclei or head. Okay, this is another um, slide of your seminiferous tubule. So right here on the line, these are going to be your spermatogonia. In the middle are going to be your spermatocytes. And then these are going to be your spermatids, very elongated. Um, almost always they're elongated. This is like right as they're transitioning between spermocytes to spermatids. Okay, but these would be more similar to what they would ask you on the practical. You do not have to know Sertoli cells, so don't worry about that one. Here's another picture. So um, right here we have the outside lining of the seminiferous tubules. So these cells here, right on that outside lining, this is going to be your spermatogonia. All in the middle right here, all of those are going to be your spermatocytes. And then these that have very elongated nuclei are going to be your spermatids. Okay, now let's go into the penis. Okay, have you ever seen those little monkeys that they're the hear no evil, see no evil? speak no evil. They have the big eyes and then the mouth. I don't know how else to explain this to you, except that this looks like the monkey, where you have an eye here and an eye here, and then you have the mouth. So if you see the monkey shape, then you know that this is the testes. I'm sorry, not the testes, the penis. So sorry. Okay, so let's go down to the next one. Again, you can see the eye, the eye, and the mouth. You're thinking that those little monkeys, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. You're seeing the monkey face, so you know this is a penis. And this one, the monkey face is upside down, so you see the eye here, the eye here, and the mouth here. So again, this is a penis. Nothing to identify in the penis. Now we're going to look at sperm. So the sperm are going to have that elongated head with a long tail coming off. And this is a flagellum. This is what helps that sperm move from the epididymis all the way up the vas deferens tubules through the prostate gland, out the urethra, and out of the body, and then up through the female reproductive tract. So this is a picture of sperm. So all you'd have to identify here is sperm. Here's another picture just with a different dye. Now let's go into the female reproductive system. And we're gonna do it the same way. 
We're gonna look at this drawing here and identify the parts and then we'll go through the histology. So, right here would be the opening, the vagina, you go up the vagina. The opening to the uterus right here is gonna be the cervix. So the cervix can close off and can open up and it will dilate or open up very large when you're about to deliver a baby. So you go through the cervix, the opening into this big sac here. Big sac here is the uterus. That's where the baby will be housed. The ovaries right here are suspended from ligaments. And this is where the eggs are gonna be produced are and housed. This is where the eggs will mature. Once the egg is matured, then it will travel up the fallopian tube and will enter into this uterus. Okay, so now let's talk about the histology. The first thing we're gonna look at is the uterine tube, also called the fallopian tube. So you'll see it called either one. So this is what it looks like. Um, it just has a bunch of folds and twists and turns. It almost looks like a maze. Um, so if you've ever seen the little rats run in the maze or if you've ever been through a corn maze, that's kind of what it looks like. It just looks like a bunch of twists and turns and dead ends. Here's another picture of the fallopian tube or uterine tube, same thing. And then here's another picture. So when you're looking at these, you see this confusing maze-like um, image, then you're looking at the uterine tube. Now let's look at the uterus. Okay, so the uterus has, oh, I'm sorry. We have to identify the endometrium and the myometrium in the uterus. Okay, so this is the uterus and you can see it has three layers. The perimetrium is the outer layer. Remember, peri means around. So the perimetrium is gonna go all the way around the outside. Then the myometrium is the middle layer. This is the muscular layer. Myo means muscle. And then the endometrium is the inner layer of the uterus. And endo means on the inside. You only have to be able to label the myometrium, the middle muscular layer, and the endometrium, the inside layer. But you'll see this has the inside lumen or the opening in the inside. This lumen becomes larger and larger and larger as a baby grows in that uterus, but it's very small without the baby. It kind of collapses in on itself, very similar to what the bladder would do if it was empty. Okay, here's another picture of it, and you can see this outside layer called the perimetrium, this middle layer called the myometrium, and this inside layer here called the endometrium. So if I ask you, what is this organ or gland, you would say uterus. If I ask you what this structure is, you would say myometrium. If I ask you what this structure is or this layer, you would say endometrium. Here's another picture. So the very outside, almost like skin of the uterus would be called the perimetrium. This darker area here in this picture, the way this one is stained is the myometrium and the lighter um, area with the little um, circles and squiggly tube looking things going through it, that's the endometrium, okay? So identify this organ or gland, it would be uterus. Identify this layer would be myometrium. Identify this layer, endometrium. So when you have endometriosis, um, it's gonna cause damage to this endometrium. And if the damage is bad enough, then it will cause the female to become um, unable to carry a child to term. Okay, also with the uterus, you have to identify the three phases. 
the proliferative, the secretory, and the menstruation or menstrual phase. Okay, so these are different stages of the endothelial or endometrial lining, okay? <clears throat> so in this slide here, excuse me, you see that you have the menses phase. So on uh, or during a woman's menstrual phase, she is gonna be bleeding out and sloughing off the inside layer of cells from the endometrium. So you'll see here, it's very nondescript. You can't really see a lot in here. And usually pretty much the entire um, endometrium is gonna be a pink to a red, because remember you have an increase of blood or bleeding in that um, menstrual phase. So this is your menstrual or menses phase. The middle picture here, this is your proliferative phase. And in this, you're gonna see a lot of endometrial glands. So these little circles and um, stretched out tubes, these are your endometrial glands. And you're gonna see a very light um, upper edge, and then it will get darker as you go down towards your myometrium. Then in your secretory phase, in your secretory phase, you're gonna see those endometrial glands start looking more corkscrew. So they look um, like squiggly lines, like a slinky. Okay, here's another um, set of pictures here. So both of these are gonna be your proliferative. You do not have to say early or late. So in there, you're gonna have a lighter upper portion and then it's gonna get dark as you go down to your myometrium and you'll see your uh, glands here. And then in your secretory, you'll see, I'm gonna mark this one. So like this one, you can see it kind of looks like it's corkscrewing down. Those little corkscrews or squigglies going down, that's gonna be very indicative of the secretory phase. And then, this one here at the end is a very dark red, hot pink. This is your menstrual phase or menses phase, okay? So if I asked you um, which phase this is, you're gonna say proliferative. If I ask you what phase this number two is, it's secretory, and number three is menstrual or menses phase, okay? Okay, this is pretty much the same picture. It's just drawn out a little bit different way. This first picture is showing you at what days of a woman's cycle she would be in. So at zero days um, or the, the first day after mens the menstrual cycle, you would be in your proliferative phase. About day 14 or so, you're gonna enter into the secretory phase and around 28 days, you're gonna enter into the menstrual phase. So again, these are the same pictures. Oops, sorry about that. Did not realize this slide was a blank one. Okay, um, again, this is showing you the proliferative phase. You have the outside lining here, it's lighter, you, but you can see your, um, your glands and then it gets darker at the bottom. Secretory phase, you're seeing these corkscrew or slinky looking glands. And I don't think I had another menstrual in there. Okay, the vagina. In the vagina, what you're looking at is a bunch of stratified squamous epithelium because there is a lot of friction that goes on in the vagina friction from sexual intercourse and friction from uh, delivering the baby and then from the menses, um, our menstrual cycle every month. So this would be a picture of the vagina. Again, you're seeing um, a lot of stratified squamous epithelium up here. And remember, you're gonna have stratified squamous epithelial any place where you have a lot of friction going on. This is another picture of the vagina. 
Again, a lot of stratified squamous epithelium up here. And another picture of the vagina, same thing, a lot of stratified squamous epithelium up top here. Okay, now let's look at the ovary. In the ovary, you have to identify the primary, secondary, tertiary follicles, the corpus luteum, and the corpus albicans. So this is showing um, the different um, stages of egg development. So this first block right here, these are your primordial cells. They are very, very small and they just almost have like a pinpoint nucleus in the middle of the cell. It's not really a nucleus, but that's what it looks like, okay? Then they will mature from primordial cells, which are almost like your egg stem cells. And then they will mature into the primary follicle. The primary follicle has um, the layer of cells around the outside. Then there's a big vacant area with a very small nucleus looking object in the middle. Then this is your secondary follicle. In the secondary follicle, you'll see, uh, a lot of times you'll see a C-shaped space in the, um, in the middle of the uh, follicle. And you're seeing right here the developing oocyte or the developing egg in the middle of the um, follicle but this egg has attached to one side of the follicle. So you won't see the circle going all the way around the oocyte or the egg, okay? So I'm going to use my pen right here and I'm going to circle the oocyte. So that's the oocyte. The follicle is just the uh, sac that the egg sits in, okay? And then down here, you are seeing your tertiary follicle. So in your tertiary follicle, you'll now see that the space is not just a crescent moon shape, it's much wider and much broader. And the oocyte has traveled all the way to one side of the um, follicle. Then your corpus luteum. The corpus luteum looks very granular and the corpus albicans here at the last one looks like uh, cotton candy or chewed up bubble gum. Okay, so now let's go through some slides showing us these. Okay, again, you're starting from your primordial uh, follicle up here. It's very nondescript, very, very small. Looks like it has a pinpoint nucleus in the middle of it. Then you go into your primary follicle. Your primary follicle has usually like two layers of outside cells with your immature oocyte in the middle, very small still. Then you go to your secondary follicle and your secondary follicle, a lot of times you're seeing that crescent C-shaped uh, space on one side with your immature oocyte or egg that's attached to one side. In your tertiary, Follicle, also called your graphene follicle. You might see it on some slides called graphene follicle. That's your tertiary follicle. You're seeing a very large open space and you're seeing that oocyte very much more pronounced and developed. And the cell or the follicle itself is much larger. Then you would spit out the egg out of the follicle and then the egg would go up the uterine tube and into the uterus. And then after the follicle spits out the egg, it becomes the corpus uh, luteum and then it becomes the corpus albicans. And you can't really see what those look like on this slide, but we'll go into that in just a minute. Okay, so when you're looking at the ovary, you're gonna be looking at a bunch of these different follicles in different stages of maturation. A female is born with all of the eggs she will ever have. So you will not be making new eggs after you're born. All of the eggs are already pre-existing in your ovary, but they are going to, or they will be in different stages of maturation. So you'll have those primordial cells that are your very, very immature cells all the way up 
to your primary, secondary, tertiary, and then your corpus albicans and, and um, luteums. So what you're looking for here are all the different stages of maturation here. So when you see all these different stages of maturation, you know that this organ or gland is an ovary, okay? And I'm gonna go through some of the cells here. So right here, you're gonna be seeing a primordial cell. They're the smallest cells. These are primordial cells as well. Here's another one. Very nondescript, very, very small. It looks like a very, very small nucleus in the inside. Then this one here is your primary. This one's a primary. Um, this one's a primary. These are your primary follicles. You'll see the layer of cells around the outside and not much going on on the inside. Sometimes you can see a little bit of a nucleus looking thing going on, but still not much going on there. Okay. And the rest of those cells don't worry about. So like the granulosa cells and the fecal layers, you don't have to know that. It was just a good slide. Okay, this is showing the difference between the primary follicle and the secondary follicle. So let me point to some primordial cells first. So you see these small ones out here? These are your primordial cells and they will develop into this one right here that I'm putting a one on. This number one cell, this is a primary follicle. So in this, you're seeing the outside layer of cells and you're seeing um, almost looks like an inside nucleus here, but that's all you're seeing. Then you go mature into a secondary follicle. In the secondary follicle, you see this area right here and this area right here, you're starting to see the C-shape or crescent moon halos being formed here. And the cell itself or the follicle itself is much larger. Okay, this is another slide. So if I asked you to identify the organ or gland, this would be ovary. And you know that because you're seeing these cells at different stages of maturation. So the primordial cells down there towards the left uh, bottom corner, these are gonna be your very, very immature cells. Those will mature into your primary follicles. Remember your primary follicles are going to be a layer of cells around the outside with a, what looks like a nucleus on the inside. And the one I've just put the green arrow at, that's the kind you would see on a practical. This one right here, this one is just too hard to distinguish because it's kind of between the primordial and the primary follicle. So the one where I put the arrow, that's more of what you would see on a practical. And then right here, this would be the number, the number two cell here. This would be your secondary follicle. You're seeing almost like a crescent shaped moon here and your uh, oocyte, your immature egg cell is starting to move to one side of the cell. So it's starting to push to one side. This one that I'm putting the number three on would be considered a tertiary follicle. So you're seeing a very large open area on one side and the oocyte has been completely pushed to the other side of the follicle. Okay. Okay, now let's look at the corpus luteum and the corpus albicans. Remember I said um, once the um, follicle spits the egg out and the egg leaves the follicle to travel through the uterine tube, you're gonna have an empty uh, follicle. That empty follicle is called the corpus luteum. So the corpus luteum, you'll see it right here where I put the number one, it's very nondescript and just very, pretty much looks like a very granular cell. There's nothing in it, okay? Here's another um, image, and let me point out this. 
I'll go through all the cells here. So again, if I ask you what organ or gland this is, you would say an ovary. This one that I'm putting the one beside right here, that would be a primordial cell. And this one right here would be a uh, primary follicle. This one would be a tertiary follicle, or sorry, a secondary follicle, sorry. Number three would be a secondary follicle. And number four right here would be a tertiary follicle. So you can see it has an oocyte pushed to one side and a very large um, spacey area over here. Then number five right here is the corpus luteum. So again, all it looks like is a almost like you shook pepper into water. It's very granular looking. Here's another picture of a corpus luteum right here. Again, very granular looking, nothing very much uh, distinctive about it. Now let's look at the corpus albicans. So the corpus luteum is going to continue to break down and be reabsorbed by the body and it becomes a corpus albicans. Corpus albicans is um, gonna look like cotton candy or chewed bubble gum. So all of this is the corpus albicans. It's that bubble gum, chewed up bubble gum looking area. This is another picture of the corpus albicans. And then here's another picture of the corpus albicans. Again, looking like cotton candy or chewed bubble gum.